Hey, Pastor Mark Conforti here with another Cheerwine Chat. I grabbed a Cheerwine, how about you grab one too? In this special episode, I talk with Gary Cook, the pastoral counselor who keeps an office at our church. He has experience as a pastor, but also special training in psychotherapy. And he brings all of these wonderful gifts and talents to bear in talking with people about life's challenges and struggles. Thinking about what a bizarre year this has been and what a beautiful season that we are about to enter, I thought I would love to ask him some questions. So without any further ado, here's my conversation with Gary Cook. Well, Gary, I want to say welcome to Cheerwine Chat. I'm glad we could have this time together. Greetings. <laughs> you know, Thanksgiving is just a few days away, which means for many people, Christmas started a month ago. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're right in what we like to call the holiday season, right? So uh, I was just excited to ask you and curious to spend this time together. What are some of your special holiday memories growing up? Oh, when, when, when you asked me that, the very first thing that came to mind uh, is my mother and her desserts. She loved desserts, and she would make as many as the countertop would hold, <laughs> just everything under the sun. She would start around Thanksgiving, and she'd not stop until after New Year's, and so there were cakes and pies and candy and confections, and it was all good, and we loved it, and uh, by the time the holiday was over, we didn't need any more sweets until the next year. <laughs> really fun at the time. You're making me hungry just thinking about all of that. Have you tried replicating some of your mother's recipes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. In fact, uh, my wife loves some of those things. My mother made interesting things uh, that were particular to the area, like banana croquettes and apricot salad. Um, her chest cake was particularly good, too. A thousand yeah. calories a bite, but boy, it was good. <laughs> so through the years, what holiday traditions have you and your family developed? We do um, a variety of things on years. My daughter lives very far away and she has children. And so she doesn't make it every year. When she doesn't, we do things a lot differently. Uh, my wife and I don't buy each other gifts anymore. We have too much stuff as it is, so we don't, we don't need more stuff. Uh, what we do share are holiday stories from our past before we knew each other, and it's amazing. Uh, the, the thing we try to do is uh, share stories that we haven't shared before. You'd think after 31 years that would be impossible to do, but it is not. Uh, through a whole lifetime, we can never tell it all. So it's enjoyable. Uh, that, that, for me, is a real gift, getting those stories. How special, discovering something new, and maybe with each story, things start to make a little bit more sense about <laughs> why things are the way that they are. So why is it that these stories and our traditions, especially around the holidays, why is it that they're so meaningful to us? Well, holidays come once a year, and, uh, and we pack them full of everything that we can. And uh, there's all kinds of emotions that go with it. A lot of pleasant emotions, and sometimes so not so pleasant things go with it. But anything that's attached to emotion, we tend to remember very strongly. It's also a time when... Um, if the family does not gather together any other time, the larger family draws together around holidays and it becomes quite special. And then we have all the cultural expectations that go with it. Uh, we disappoint ourselves sometimes by expecting too much, but there's a lot going on in holidays to remember. There's a lot going on. And what's so bizarre about the holidays in 2020, there's a lot that's not going on. Yeah. Lots of changes. 
lots of things we're needing to do without. Um, what do you think we should anticipate, like deep within our soul? What should we anticipate and what should we do? This is going to be a holiday unlike any other that most of us has ever experienced before. We know that um, conditions for us are more unsafe than they've ever been. So everything that we're used to doing this time of year, shopping and wrapping and cooking and uh, seeing people, that's all going to have to be different for many of us. Some people will maintain uh, their traditions and, and their rituals, um, but it's, it's very dangerous. And for people who have special uh, susceptibility to the illness, it, it's quite dangerous. And so many folks are going to be much more isolated than they've ever been. That's going to be difficult. It's difficult on a day that's not a holiday, but giving up our traditions and giving up connections just feels like a huge assault. So that will make it difficult. I think it's going to be important to do things a little differently this year um, to help ourselves through. The first is to know that it's going to be different and to uh, not expect the same kinds of things. When we expect what can't happen, we set ourselves up for disappointment. We're going to have some loss, and we should expect that. Loss causes grief, and grief causes pain and, and suffering, and there will be some of that this year. We will feel, feel some sadness uh, about what we've lost, but it, it, it should not be all loss. Uh, there should be some things to gain. Perhaps we'll have some opportunities to learn some things this year by getting out of the rut that we're normally in. And uh, so not maintaining the expectation, but being open to what may be happening is, is really good. It's important not to deny our grief, but it's also, not, it's also important not to stay there but to, to look beyond that uh, at what we do have. And uh, when you really start counting your blessings, you realize how much indeed you do have and how fortunate we are, how God has been good to us. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, counting your blessings is a good thing to do. Keep any traditions that you can practice safely. Um, it's important not to lose any more than you have to. And uh, if you don't visit or get visited, um, Zoom people or call them. Or on your day of celebration, write letters to people. I love getting handwritten letters. You don't get many of those anymore. And they're really, for those of us who have gotten those in the past, they're really special gifts, uh, sometimes keepsakes. So that, that's a good thing to do. Um, if you don't have anybody to call, I did this one year, um, call ahead so that the nursing home will know that you're not a weird person but that you're trying to do a little bit of ministry and ask them who's there that's capable of a conversation that's not going to have any visits who's there that is going to be really lonely and see if they'll let you talk to that person for a while and then in talking to that person i always focus on them and ask them what what kinds of things do you remember? And those folks love talking about the things that they can remember. And that can be a special gift. We always get more when we give to other people. So it's a great thing. And then we sometimes at our home on holidays when family can't visit, we'll set places for them. and. Uh, we don't put out the, the full silverware and all that, but we'll put a plate in each place where they might have been. 
as a way of recognizing that those are special people in our lives and that they're not in that place this year, but we anticipate the time when they will be in that place. And uh, it, it's kind of like uh, when the Israelites celebrated Passover and set up a place for Elijah. Uh, it's an in anticipation. And so that's a good thing to do too. Wow, you've, you've said so much and you've given us so much wisdom and ideas to ponder deeply. And instead of dreading the holidays, I think you've helped us to be hopeful in thinking about what it can be instead of what it's not. So yes. thank you. Thank you for sharing all of this. And uh, I'm just so grateful that we've been able to, you know, share cheer wine and chat together. And um, I want to say happy Thanksgiving. And later in December, I'll look forward to saying Merry Christmas too. Yeah, the same to you and your family. I miss seeing you on a regular basis and I wish you all well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gary. It's, it's a joy to be in ministry with you. Likewise.